watching just the news i'm amrita balachandran let's get straight to our top story on russia's invasion in ukraine it's day 7 Uh, more than 2000 uh, ukrainian civilians have been killed in hundreds of uh, structures including transport facilities hospitals and uh, homes have been destroyed according to ukraine's emergency services now ukraine has also claimed that over 5800 or russian troops have died till now according to a report by the bbc there is intense fighting in the north east and south of the country with key ukrainian cities of kharkiv and kherson uh being targeted by russian artillery now in an update to what's happened in kharkiv at least 21 people have been killed and 112 of them wounded according to a report by the bbc kharkiv is ukraine's second most populous uh, city the governor uh, of kharkiv regional state administration has said that all russian attacks were repulsed and positions held meanwhile russia's defense ministry has said that its troops have now captured the south- southern ukrainian city of kherson uh, if the city has fallen it would be it would make it the largest in ukraine to be captured by russian forces so far now the bbc had reported earlier that the city's mayor had said that its train station and port has been captured in a new address this morning ukraine's president has said that russia wants to erase ukraine's history this comes after russian missile hit a holocaust memorial in kiev which is its capital city uh, the president has said and i quote such a missile strike shows that for many people in russia our kiev is completely foreign they know nothing about our capital about our history but they have an order to erase our history erase our country erase us all now according to the ri news agency russian foreign minister has said that if a third world war were to take place it would involve nuclear weapons and be destructive now lavrov has said that russia would face a real danger if ukraine's cap- capital acquired nuclear In the meantime in a series of tweets Russian opposition leader has called for protests across Russia and beyond he said that Putin is not Russia now um the opposition leader has also tweeted and i quote we russia want to be a nation of peace a last few people would call us that now and an update now on what's going on with india's evacuation it's called operation ganga External Affairs Minister J S J Shankar has tweeted today that India has evacuated 1377 citizens from Ukraine in the past 24 hours. Now uh, he tweeted and I quote six flights have now departed for India in the last 24 hours including the first flights from Poland carried back 1377 more internationals from Ukraine end quote Now we told you yesterday that Indian Air Force had also now uh, gotten involved in Operation Ganga. Uh, it's launched about four flights till now to bring back Indian nationals from Ukraine. First IFC-17 aircraft uh, to return from Romania tonight, with around 200 Indian citizens returning from Ukraine at about 11 p.m. Now two more fly- uh, planes will return from Poland and Hungary by early morning tomorrow. Now India has put out a new advisory for Indian nationals in Kharkiv and this is what the embassy had tweeted and I quote urgent advisory to all Indian nationals in Kharkiv they must leave Kharkiv immediately under all circumstances they must reach a uh, settlement that they have mentioned by 6 pm today end quote Now according to NDTV The Indian embassy in Ukraine's capital has shut down and the ambassador and the staff are on their way to the western part of the country now NDTV reported this quote sources uh India has so far been advising students and others to move to the western borders Also in the news Russian ambassador designate to India has said today that India has requested Russia for the emergency evacuation of its citizens stranded in Ukraine through russian territory now uh, he said and i quote 
we have received India's requests for emergency evacuation of all those stranded. Uh, we are actively working on all ways and means to launch such an operation and provide a humanitarian corridor for evacuation of the people there. And now, this is what the world is saying as far as this uh, Russia's invasion in Ukraine is concerned. The U.S. has announced that it would ban Russian aircraft from American airspace following similar bans by Canadian and European authorities. Now, Biden said, and I quote, we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia and adding an additional squeeze on their economy. And now, tech firms have also interestingly joined in, and most of these are American firms. Google has announced that it has blocked mobile applications related to Russian state-run media firms, RT and Sputnik, from its app store in Europe. In the meantime, Apple has said that it is pausing product sales in Russia and has limited Apple Pay within the country. Several other tech giants also like uh, YouTube and Twitter have also taken steps to curb the spread of misinformation via Russian state-run media firms. Moving on now to COVID roundup, uh, starting off with Maharashtra, which has now eased restrictions. Uh, it's eased COVID restrictions in 14 districts, including Pune and Mumbai. Uh, these are the guidelines. I'm going to read out them for you. Uh, restaurants, shopping complexes, cinema halls, and theaters uh, will function at 100% capacity in these 14 districts. Offices, both public and private, have been allowed to open with full capacity. Swimming pools, religious places, entertainment parks will also be allowed to open with 100% capacity. In the meantime, entertainment, social, sports, all of these gatherings uh, is capped at 50% of venue capacity. Also, there should be no restrictions for interstate and intrastate movement for fully vaccinated people. For people who have not uh, gotten their vaccinations yet, they will have to produce an RT-PCR test, which is valid up to 70. In the meantime, U.S. President Joe Biden has launched a new initiative that will allow Americans to get tested for COVID at a pharmacy. And if tested positive, they can immediately receive free antiviral pills. Now, uh, Joe Biden made the announcement during his State of the Union speech. This is a report by Reuters which says the president also urged his countrymen to prepare for new COVID variants in the future. Now the news now, starting off with an update on the drugs cruise case uh, in Mumbai. The SIT of NCB has reportedly found no evidence that Arlen Khan was part of a larger drugs conspiracy or international drug trade. And this is according to an exclusive report by Hindustan Times, which has quoted sources. Now the SIT also said, uh, according to this one report, that there were several irregularities in the raid on the yard Cordelia during which he was arrested. In reaction to this, the SIT chief and NCP DDG, uh, Sanjay Singh, has told ANI, and I quote, highly premature to say there's no evidence against Aryan Khan. Probes still in progress. Recorded multiple statements have not reached any conclusion yet. On to some politics right now, starting off with West Bengal civic polls. The TMC has won 102 out of 108 municipalities in the civic polls. So clean a uh, sweep there. Um, also, there's no opposition in 31 municipalities. In the meantime, the left front has won uh, one municipality, while the BJP and the Congress have failed to secure clear majority in any of them. Also in the news, a division bench of Kerala High Court upheld the ban on Malayalam news channel Media One TV. It dismissed the appeals of the management and journalists who had challenged the um, on February 9th single bench order that had refused to lift it. Now, responding to this verdict, Media One TV has said that it would move an appeal in the Supreme Court. Now, the news channel had gone off air on the 31st of January after the center suspended its telecast, citing security reasons. On to business news right now, starting off with oil prices, which have now hit 
a hundred and thirteen dollar a barrel. That is the highest level since June twenty fourteen. Now it rose after even after the International Energy Agency's members agreed to release sixty million barrels of oil from emergency stockpiles. Now Russia is one of the biggest energy producers in the world. And investors are worried that oil or gas supplies could be affected. Also in the news, a day after Bharat Pay's co-founder Ashneer Grover resigned as MD, Bharat Pay has said in a statement today that he is, and I quote, no longer an employee, a founder, or a director of the company. End quote. Now, the fintech firm has accused Grover's family and relatives. Of engaging in extensive misappropriation of company funds, Bharat Pay has also said that the board reserves the right to take further legal action against him. Now, Mr. Grover has hit back at the company, and in the statement today, has said that he is appalled by the company alleging fraud and financial misdoings by himself and family. And I quote: "In order to enrich themselves and fund their lavish lifestyles," adding that. Uh, The only thing lavish about him are his dreams. Now, there's a there's been a tiff between Bharat Pay and Ashwin Grover ever since an audio clip emerged in which Mr. Grover was allegedly heard threatening an employee of Kotak Wealth Management over his failure to secure financing for Nykaa's initial share sale. Now, Bharat Pay has alleged Mr. Grover resigned after receiving the agenda for an upcoming board meeting that included. Submission of an independent audit regarding his conduct, and one piece of really, really good news: uh, the UIDAI or the Unique Identification Authority of India has informed the Supreme Court that it will issue Aadhaar cards to sex workers on the basis of a certificate to be given by the National AIDS Control Organisation, and without really insisting on proof of residence from them. Now, earlier, the court had asked authorities to explore the information with the National AIDS Control Organization on sex workers uh, can be treated as proof of residence and Aadhaar be given to them on the basis of the same. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching.